So I'm just going to do a quick video on um, the functions that you can define within uh, classes or within customized objects. Uh, right. Anyway, we're going to make write a class. Um, I don't know what class, but I don't know something where we can compare the values or do something with the values. So we'll we'll call the class uh, two values, I guess. Right. And We'll define the initialization with uh, define underscore underscore init underscore underscore. Remember, always put self as an argument, right? And then I'll put value. Let's call it value one. And I'll make it so this has maybe value one, which is equal to value one, and that it has value two, which is equal to value two. Not sure what's happening there. That's fine. Okay, so let's say, let's imagine, for example, that I might want to do something with these values here. I'm not sure why I did that. There is no value two. Let's just make it 50. Maybe I want to compare these values, for example. Maybe this is something that I'm going to do frequently. I'm going to compare value one to value two to see which is bigger and print out the result, right? Now, I'm going to have to use at least three comparisons probably i need to compare that this is higher than this and to see if it's higher than this do something if that's equal to this do something and if that's less than this do something right with the print statements that's going to be at least six lines of code okay so let's imagine i have to do these comparisons two thousand times that's twelve thousand lines of code i've got to write so if i could define a function within this class and call that function on objects of this class, I would be using a sixth of the amount of lines of code that I'd need to be. So I'd be doing six times less work, essentially. And I wouldn't have to keep checking my typing um, every time I type the uh, algorithm, okay? And in this class, we actually can define functions on the class. So uh, I'll show you how to do that. So, oops, it's got to be the same tabbing as the one I've over. So we're going to define a Compare, uh, we'll say compare one and two. That's the function name. Okay, we have to use the argument self in any functions within uh, a class, and all it's going to be is if whatever we'll say if self dot value one more than self dot value two. Do something, and this time we just want it to print out that value one is greater than value two. Okay. Elif self dot value one equals equals self dot value two print value one is the same as value two. This isn't always strictly true for equals equals, for those of you who might be complaining about that, but I'm not going to go into that in detail today. For these function purposes, it will be fine, okay? Self.value two here. So there you go, the free comparisons, they're the minimum free comparisons uh, I'd need to do. And as you can see, it's going to be six lines of code, right? And if I needed to do this comparison, say 2,000 times, I'd actually have to write 12,000 lines of code. Uh, whereas if I just call this function on an object of type two values, I only have to do 2,000 lines of code, which, as I say, is a sixth of the work that I'd have to do otherwise, okay? Is less then value two i'm just going to put for there for the print statement so we'll run that we'll put that into the system so we've got our class it's got its two properties value one and value two so let's make an object of that type so we'll call it odd one odd one is equal to two values and we'll set value one to be greater than value two in this instance we'll make object two two values 
and we'll set value one to be less than uh, value two in this instance. And we'll say object three is equal to two values and we'll make value one equal to value two at this point, okay? And we'll put object one, we'll print um, object one dot value one and we'll print object one dot value two, okay? And we'll copy and paste this for essentially all of these uh, of these variables that we set here. Okay, just so that you can see uh, the values, so that you can do the comparisons on your own in your head. Okay, let's run all that. Let's hope it works because that's quite a lot of code. I should have checked the first few lines, but never mind. And okay, so these first printouts, these first two printouts are the printouts for object one, and value one of object one is 100, value two is 50, as, uh, as is set. For the second object, it's the value one is 49, and value two is 50. And for the third object, value one is 50, and value two is 50. Um, you can print these out individually uh, to satisfy that if you want. And then down here, oops, don't want a comment line there. Down here, I'm going to I'm going to call the compare one and two function that we've defined inside the class uh, to compare these values and get print statement. Okay, so we're going to say obj one dot compare one and two. Easy enough. Doesn't need any argument. Just parentheses. Value one is greater than two. Well, it certainly is. Okay. We'll say object two dot compare one and oops, I need a capital like that and two. And then we'll do it for object three as well. Dot compare one and two. Here we are. So let's compare the two values in object uh, two. So what do you think is going to happen with this? Obviously, it should tell us that value one is lesser than or less than value two. And it has done so. And here, they're both 50. So it should tell us that the values are both the same. And it has done. Okay. Now, there's a few other things you can do um, with functions. In fact, there are two functions, really quite cool functions, uh, called setters and getters. So let's imagine we have a class, uh, we'll call it personal information, okay? Or I'll just call it P info, okay? Which is just short for personal info because I used this example before in an earlier video. So. We'll define it, we'll initialize it, we'll say, um, oh, I don't know, but the personal info we want is the age and the name. That's all we want, okay? And we'll say self.name, uh, self.age, sorry, is equal to age and self.name is equal to name, right? Let's imagine in this personal info class uh, that we want to be able to find out someone's name and we also want to change be able to change someone's name okay well we can actually uh, define methods to do that so in all if you want to get someone's name you would make a method called a get method whereby you would use the keyword define get underscore name okay the only argument in this is self, and then you use a return statement, and you put return self dot name or self dot property. It doesn't really matter uh, what the property is as such. Okay. Don't know what's wrong there. Ah, oh, the unindent doesn't match, so that needs to go there. That's fine. I'm not sure why it's not auto indenting, but I don't really care either. And then we can define set 
underscore name self okay and then we need another argument and we'll call it new name and we'll say that self dot name equal to new name easy enough all right so let's run that into the system load that class up and let's make an object of this class okay so I don't know what what can we call this object we'll call it Timmy no we won't call it Timmy we'll call it no name because we don't know what the name is going to be or we might want to change the name right and we make a pinfo class and we'll say that this person is 46 and the name is Timmy, right? Okay. Now we can use we can use print and we can print for example this this object, this variable uh, dot age to get the age if we want. We just print it like that quite simply but to get the name what we can actually do is we can just put the variable name and we can use a dot notation here and we're going to put get underscore name that's it and that's going to be this method here that we've defined you see how it uh, you, you can notice that we actually get an output here it doesn't just print something this actually outputs into the system and we get an output of the name timmy so we didn't actually have to use a print statement there and we didn't have to use dot name uh, because the get name method does it for us now let's say timmy uh, timmy's wife or husband let's say timmy's husband let's mix it up let's say timmy's husband um actually uh, got the name wrong, spelt the name wrong because Timmy's husband doesn't really care much about details and Timmy's name is not Timmy, it's actually Timothy uh, but Timmy's husband just calls Timothy Timmy and forgot that you know his name's not that formal, right? So we need to change the name Timmy to the name Timothy because Timothy is the name that Timmy would prefer uh, to be used and it's the official name not Timmy okay so we have to set a new name now here this needs to be Timothy but we don't want to remake this class I mean it doesn't matter for this class because there's only two properties right but imagine if this class had 300 properties and you'd have to put all of them the same and then change Timmy what if you wanted to change 10 properties it would be faster to probably use 10 functions than it would be to use uh, this right so it's good to have a method that allows you to change them and this set name method we're going to call it now and you'll see that it'll change the name so we use no name dot set underscore name and we're going to call him timothy because that's his real name no errors that's always good and I'm actually going to print no name dot name and I'm also going to use the get method so that we can see if the get method and the print method show the same thing just so that everyone can see um, that the get does almost the same thing as the print method okay so when we print p info has no attribute get name oh no it doesn't but then capital sorry right, so we print that there anyway and we get timothy yeah notice there's no out and then we're going to use the get main name method properly and it's the same it's timothy so this just proves that uh, the get main name method isn't it's not producing some other name, some weird thing. It is returning this name, okay? And so these setter and get getter methods are very useful uh, just, just when you've got complex classes or when you're going to do a lot of functions on the classes. It's more useful to have 
uh, defined getter and the defined setter method when you want to change things or reassure yourself um, that things might be uh, what you think they are, for example, within uh, objects of your class. So for that reason, they are quite useful and they're more or less integral to um, object-oriented programming. It doesn't really matter what language you're using, whether it's going to be Python, Java, I think C as well actually uses that, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, it's an important concept to remember, it is. Um, another thing with these, okay, is these methods here cannot be used with objects outside of this class. So for example, I can't use the method compare one and two on a, on a p info structure uh, just because and I can actually prove it so we'll make uh, p info all values okay we'll make a variable called p info all values right and it'll be a p info object and I'll have both of the values as numbers right I'm just going to separate it there, just make it look nice and tidy. And I'm going to use this method, compare one and two. Just going to copy and paste that. Actually, no, I think I can remember that. So, how is it? Compare one and two. I think it's felt like that, is it? Yeah, yeah, it is. That's fine. I'm going to just have that there. And I'm just going to put p info dot p info all values dot compare one and two what do you think is going to happen so i'll just put that in in fact just to give you all reassurance that i'm not cheating in some way here i will show you the values the uh, age and name values prove that they are both integers. Oops, I returned only one of them. So we'll do the age first. 33 and the name is 99 as an integer, right? See how it doesn't have quotation marks on it? And if I use this compare one and two function on the p info all values object of class p info, there's an error um, because the object has no attribute compare one and two. So it's trying to find a property uh, as in a self dot property property and it can't find one. But when you use the dot notation, it can also find maybe a function, right? But there's no function defined in here or no property defined in here called compare one and two. So even though using this method, comparing these two numbers uh, would work, you know, it's possible because they're both integers, they're both comparable to each other. Um, you can't compare them because this function is from another method, okay, from another class, okay? Um, I'm not sure if that's confused you, but you know, just go over that again. This, this part, isn't so important. It's something you'll you'll learn with time. But everything else we've done here with the setter and getter and just the basics of using uh, a function for a class to uh, you know just save you coding, just save you having to use things multiple times when you shouldn't need to, and just tidying up your your, your functions, just keeping them all attached to the objects that they should belong to. You know, that's all probably the most important part of this lesson. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.